guys, welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Today I am out investigating and searching for an old mine that is outside of Burrow Creek or near Burrow Creek. There's a hot spring, there's some really cool adits, there's some really beautiful metamorphic cliffs like the ones that are behind me, a lot of really cool crystals and calcite. It's an absolutely beautiful place. So we are here to go on a little adventure to check it out. So thank you so much for being part of my adventure and let's go see what we find. As most of you know by now, half the adventure is just the journey that it takes to get to what I'm looking for. And my side-by-side's always been pretty handy and trustworthy, except for when I break a belt. We were okay this time though. And we have a great amalgamation of beautiful sandstone cliffs that have been dug out by water, gorgeous volcanics, and some metamorphic rock too. Hopefully just hearing all three of those takes you back to fourth grade when your teacher taught you about geology and rock types. <laughs> As you can see, the road is kind of bumpy, a little bit messed up, but if you have a decent four wheel drive and take it slow, you can get down here with a truck. So here we have some volcanics right down here on the bottom to a mix of metamorphic rock and volcanic rock up above. It's absolutely stunning. The cliffs were cut really sharply by water, wind, erosion, and just the general arid temperature in Arizona. This is a small portion of Burrow Creek near Kaiser Wash, and we are going to cross it to get up and look for the mine on top of the hill. Again, these are some more beautiful metamorphic cliffs. What we're about to see is quite interesting. When I'm looking at these areas and investigating, I oftentimes wonder what they were looking for, and I sometimes find stuff like this. This is old drill holes. They might have just been old horizontal holes looking for water or just testing out the area in general. But keeping your eyes peeled is very keen in these situations. Oh, cool. Awesome. We didn't bring lights, did we? In my backpack. It only goes right back there, guys. Not very far at all. I'm gonna walk up here really quickly and see. Ouch! Oh, cat's claw sucks. If there's anything up here. Something here, like right where this cable is coming out of, and goes up over there. I think that that was a hole that was buried, but right up here looks promising. Cool is 
that? Mm. Neat, guys. Whoa. Uh -huh. That's the old one. And again, it doesn't go any further than just where you can see. I can see there's some pockets right here that they were probably prospecting, digging out at one point. And right up in here, you got some cool little vugs of quartz crystals and all this metamorphic rock that's around here, really heavy in calcite and all of this quartz, a little bit of iron staining. I'm thinking just what, from what it looks like, looks like it was like a lead zinc and maybe some gold. Look how neat this is. Bunch of calcite, which is pretty nice. It's just really beautiful, shiny, crystalline. It's absolutely crazy, but it looks really pretty. And the light hits it just right. Hey, look how shiny it is. Hmm. Pretty neat find, huh? We have quite the incline going on here with the side-by-side. -side. Pretty typical. Anyways, I bounce over to this next little flat spot because there's an adit right behind these rocks over here. Mm-hmm. So this adit is actually pretty cool. We're in between some volcanics and some metamorphic rock. A lot of jointing, a lot of faulting going on. Again, Adits that are in hard rock like this is from seam mining. So they were following a seam or veins of ore and extracting them through this adit. You guys can't see it really well, but there is calcite all over the ground. These are big square chunks of it and the light wasn't doing it any kind of justice for how shiny it was, but it was still pretty neat. After collecting a little bit of it, I wasn't that impressed after I washed it off. It was just kind of a gang mineral. But still, it's pretty cool to see. This is an awesome little druzy quartz feature inside of this vug. You can see it almost looks like a pillar or stalactite. Also, there's a ton of bat poop all over the floor. It's that blackish stuff that's in front of me. <laughs> Again, a lot of calcite on the ceilings really competent rock in this area very little rock fall on the ground which is kind of reassuring when you're walking inside of these so i'm not really afraid of small dark places but i am afraid of what could be in those places and especially when like at its turn to the side you don't know what's down there so it kind of gives me the creeps when i'm walking around oh this veining on the wall is pretty cool this is straight up some metamorphic calcite veining it's pretty awesome there's also spray paint all over the walls that's what those multicolored markings are and this is the end it didn't go back in very far but it's still pretty interesting and there's the way out as you can see i kind of pick up my pace a little bit even though this video is a tad sped up i didn't want to be in there any longer because the bat poop smell was a lot oh and this is a piece of dynamite box always a big fan of finding pieces of dynamite boxes and ta-da, we have daylight. <laughs> so it's not too terrible often when you find these old sites that you actually find an old or semi-new core area. For those of you that don't know, core or core sampling is just where they stick a drill in the ground and pull out hard rock samples so that they can see a 360 degree view of the type of rock. It also allows you to see if there's any fracturing, any veining and that kind of thing. And each one is marked at usually 10 foot intervals so they usually put these little blocks in there and they say this much is 10 feet from this footage to this footage and it actually helps for measuring for things like rqd and detail logging that way you know what happened within a 10 foot section some of this as it gets down in there it looks like it was a little bit of a conglomerate which is interesting and that's some newer core that's been going on in these like wax lined boxes this is the super old stuff I don't really have a year for this mine, but anything with a wooden tray is going to be older than like the 60s and 70s, so not super old. 
But to think about it, that this stuff has been sitting here this long in the Arizona desert, just weathering away in the sun, it's pretty amazing that it's still alive and here, so to speak. <laughs> now, the way that they had marked this core was by a little aluminum tabs. And they were marking the footage using these little aluminum tabs, writing down how deep they were and what footage to what footage was in each individual tray. Like this one is saying it's 33.7 meters to 38.27 meters, and that was the interval that was in that specific tray. And each one has a different interval for the amount of meters they were deep. And they would have geologists come and log this type of stuff. I have logged a lot of core in my day. <laughs> it gets really super boring, but you do see some cool stuff if there's a lot of interesting faulting or things in veins that not everybody gets to see. Kind of like this little vug right here of quartz. This would actually be considered a weak point in the rock because a vug can actually fall apart pretty easily. And that's just something you'd want to note in the logging details. And what we find next could be the reason they were drilling core in this area, among other things. So this is a natural hot spring that is pouring out of the wall. Not necessarily all on its own. At one point in time, the people that were drilling that mine up there were probably drilling core holes everywhere. So you can see where the water is flowing out of that hole right there. This is probably one of the original core holes that they would have made from that old mine over there. And you can imagine, they probably freaked out when they found out it was hot water. It feels so nice and warm. I'm gonna get inside of it. Before I decided to jump in there, I waited till the clouds passed so that it wasn't as cold and I was hoping for the wind to die down, but I really didn't get that lucky. Even the water that's flowing out of this little hot spring is still warm. And I'd say that the temperature was roughly about 94 degrees. Perfect bathtub water. I wish I knew how long this had been flowing because to have a water output of that magnitude for that long it must be in a huge underground aquifer that's hydrothermal. And usually those hydrothermal hotspots move over time. So eventually one day, this water might be cool. In temperature, that is. It's a cool spot. It'll be cold temperature. See what I did there? <laughs> I do love how people have built this up over the years. Putting sand and things that are clay-like in between the rocks to keep the water inside. took a lot of time to drill this out or to dig this out Ooh. and then put all the rocks around it. There's a hole over here where you can actually see the water coming out and it's, gosh I don't know what the temperature is today, not warm but the water It's like your own little personal hot tub out in the desert. Hey, look at the view. That is absolutely spectacular. This is definitely not a bad way to spend a weekend. It's definitely very relaxing being out in the desert, listening to the water, and looking at the beautiful scenery. I think Dan liked videoing everything with me just chilling back in the water. I just love all those metamorphic rocks behind me. Yeah, check that out! Those are beautiful, beautiful little shiny crystals. And we are going to try to extract them from this rock right here. Mm -hmm. So I hammered on the side of this rock for a fair amount of time because I didn't want to actually break any of the crystals in this little vug and I failed. I didn't get anything out, but I didn't break what was there. So it's still remaining <laughs> and it has my chisel marks around it. So now maybe somebody else can get it out. This. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Where'd the rest of it go? Pretty though. Pretty kind of 
with all the little quartz vugs and calcite crystals, I had to do some rock hounding while I was here to collect some crystals. And this is me wishing at this very moment that I had brought a smaller chisel with me. It's like, why? Almost about. Oh, there it goes. <gasps> Look how pretty that is. Those are beautiful little quartz crystals on there. That's a nice little chunk right there. It's really cool. <laughs> wow. This is the front of an attic. Not sure how far it goes back in there, but this is an animal gate. So it means that some company usually from the state or even a state funded program comes and evaluates different adits to see how close they are to the public or public access which this one is out in the middle of nowhere and they'll put up these giant gates for critters so that the animals can get in and out but people uh, they're basically forced so you can't go inside but we can see and peer inside there this is the inside behind the back gate and it goes in there a little ways but I don't know if it turns or not to the right it might uh, it definitely smells like animals in here that's for sure but the rocks the rocks just sparkle you probably again can't see it with the video but oh my goodness sake they are just so, so super sparkly, it's insane. Thank you guys so much for watching and for coming along and being part of this adventure with me. And I hope you come back next time to see what else we can find.